Now you all have realized by this time that within us lies the peace, the beauty, the glory of our being. There's an ocean of all that. We cannot seek it outside. We have to go within what they call in the meditative state, you seek it, you enjoy it. Like when you are thirsty, you go to a river or you go to an ocean. and try to quench your thirst. But even the ocean cannot give you sweet water. So how can anything that is spread outside give you that deep thing that is within you? You are trying to find it, find it out outside where it does not lie. It is within us, absolutely within us. It is so simple because it is your own. It is within your reach, just there. Whatever you have been doing, Going out to find a joy, the so-called joy, the so-called happiness, the so-called glory of worldly powers and worldly possessions. You have to reverse it back, the whole thing. You have to project within yourself. It was not wrong that you went out. It was not correct that you went out. You should feel sorry for what you have done so far. It was not the correct way to get to the real joy of life, the real glory of your being. <coughs> It has worked in so many people that you have entered into that subtler understanding. Some people are only at a mental level, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe some are only at a physical level that they can feel it, doesn't matter. But you are on the correct lines, you are moving correctly. Try to meditate. Meditate more so that you reach your inner being. And this inner being is the vast ocean of bliss which exists in every one of us. Is that vast glorifying flood of light that floods everybody's inner beauty. So to approach it, you have to go within yourself by denying things which are against it, against your movement. Sometimes the wind can be very, very strong for you to misunderstand that the glory of God is within. But turn back. Every moment, remember that your movement has to be inward. When you move inward, you forget the ideas of your outer glories. A person 
and he was of a very base nature. Thinks that if he makes lot of money, then he has a steep joy, but he has not. He is the most unhappy person, if you go and see him. He is worried about small, small things of life. Uh, you must have heard that people who are very rich are kleptomaniacs. They are worried, they are very miserly. They are worried about a needle here and there, a little thing missing, they get upset. They have so many habits that they can't live without it. So riches have brought always a curse on human beings. So those he seek, only the riches, cannot enjoy them. Then there are some better people who think that by ruling others, by getting power, we can achieve a very great position in life. They too, I assume, pray. You have seen what happens to them. People don't even talk, want to talk about them. Now there are people who get attached someone, to one person, or to the family, to their children, to their relations, very common in India. That's also not the way you can get to God. That's also so limited, keeps you hanging around them and wasting your energy completely. But if you enter into your being <coughs> fully, then all these things have such meaning. Everything has a meaning then. In the sense, if you possess anything, and if you are that kind of a person who is supposed to be possessing, he never possesses, he's so detached. He's never possessed, he's so detached to God. But he can play around because he's so detached. He can create a drama out of it. He can play with the possessions and teach lots of lessons to people. He's so detached, so generous, he enjoys his generosity. The whole thing becomes so different, so, so dynamic. All the beauty that is created by human beings as possession is exposed before you. And you start enjoying all those things without possessing them. You understand the myth of possession. Say with your powers, that people have over other people. Those who try <coughs> to make money out of Sahaja Yoga or want to have a kind of a privilege over Sahaja Yoga, which can be very subtle, this can go very far. This subtlety goes to this extent that I have seen people try to save money on account of Sahaja that's also the attention is on money. To make money or to save money, to make a business out of Sahaja Yoga is all absurd. But if you say so, I said, all right, go ahead for a while, try. You'll find that Sahaja Yoga is no business. Of course, Sahaja Yogis can work together, can do some business. But Sahaja Yoga is no business, it's business of God, where you have to give everything that you have, not to be attached to anything, not to be attached. There's no money to be paid as such, but all your heart is to be poured into it. If you cannot pour your heart into it, you cannot achieve that. 